Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this video we'll be using Photoshop gradient masks to help us combine this picture of a girl with this kind of a fantasy background. Now if you enjoy this video, make sure you click the like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn everything about Photoshop, take a look at my complete training titles and you'll find links for those in the YouTube cards and also down in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll be using Photoshop gradient masks to help us just combine these pictures. There's a gradient mask back here, as you can see, giving us this vignette on the background. There's a real, real small one just right around the figure of the girl here, just to soften the edge up just a little bit. And then kind of a medium level gradient mask right in here. You can see right there on this one photo filter to help blend the photo filter into the photograph. So we have three different gradient masks in here. Now before we do this project, let me just show you quickly exactly what a gradient mask is and the reason why it works. So we'll just start off with a brand new file. I'll get rid of that one and let's go up here to File New. And there it is right there, default Photoshop size. It's simply a width of 7, a height of 5, and a resolution of 300. Choose Create and give us a nice blank file in here. There we go, here's our blank file. Now I'm going to just colorize the background here. I'll just put any old color back here. It doesn't really matter. I'll choose kind of a blue. There we go. Maybe a full saturation blue in here. And let's fill our background. Let's now add another layer above this. New layer button right there. Here's a new layer. Let's fill this with yellow. Again, any old yellow doesn't matter and paint bucket. There we go. So I have yellow in front of a blue. Let's now put a layer mask on the yellow and use that to blend this into the blue in different ways. So let's make a layer mask. There's our layer mask button. Notice that nothing has changed right now. That's because the layer mask is white. White is show all. So we're seeing everything of this layer. What the layer mask does is it hides parts of this layer allowing the background layer whatever below to show through. We can demonstrate that easily here. I'll just grab the rectangular marquee up there and do that. And then let's just fill this with black. Notice that I'm on the layer mask side. You see the little outline right there. And our colors have changed to just black and white. Okay, paint bucket and fill. And there we go. I'll go ahead and deselect that. So the bottom is now white and white is showing this layer. The top is black and that's hiding this layer showing the layer underneath. That's the basic concept behind the layer mask. Now a gradient mask is just a little bit different in that we use a gradient instead of just solid colors. So I'll grab the elliptical marquee again here and let's just drag a little bit of a spot just like that right there. That's good. I'm still on the layer mask. Now instead of using just the paint bucket, I'm going to change this over here to the gradient tool. And let's make sure the gradient is set at foreground background. There we are, black to white. And I'll drag a gradient just straight across like that. And there we go. So you see what happens? We now have a gradient in here. It's black at the left and it's white at the right. And where the different values of gray are, we get different amounts of blending or show through on that particular layer. So it allows us to go ahead and do that kind of a show through. Let me just go ahead now and deselect this. There we go. And that's it. That's the idea behind a gradient layer mask right there. All right, let's go ahead and use this basic concept to do a little bit of photo work. I'm just going to get rid of that. There we are. We'll start off again with a brand new file. So File New. And once again, we'll use the default Photoshop size, 7 by 5 at 300. Choose OK or Create. And there it is. I'm just going to expand this just to fit on screen. There we are. And let's reset our colors back to their defaults. OK, everything is now reset. I'm going to first bring in our background layer. And I have it sitting right in here. There we go. 
Here's a layer picture. I'm just going to float this, grab the background, and just drag it over. There we are, a real easy way to do that. And let's fit this into, or size it to fit. That looks good. Do a Control T, keyboard shortcut to bring up our transform handles. And I'm just going to stretch this out to fit the background. There we go. And click on our check mark. There it is. Now, there's a little bit of a lens reflection right here on this particular layer. Let's just go ahead and get rid of that, fix that real fast. And we'll use the clone stamp tool for that. And nothing specific in here. Mine set at 45 and a soft edge, which is okay. I'm just going to clone from right down here. Alt click, and then just kind of paint up and lose that little bit of a lens reflection. Okay, fixes that. Let's now bring our girl in on top of this. Open again, and there's the picture right there. Now I have links for both of these on my video support page, and you'll find a link for that in the description or up in the YouTube cards as well. Let's just float this out, drag her over. There we go. She's now inside. I'm going to bring her right down to the bottom right hand corner, and then Control T again. And let's hold the Shift key down this time so we don't distort our proportions and I'll just enlarge her a bit just to like we kind of fill that screen there we go just like that so just fill the screen and there it is now on this we'll be doing a selection around the girl and the rose and because of the hair up here I'll be using the layer mask technique with the refined edge so it's most going to be refined edge work which means we'll be doing our selection outside but Refine Edge won't do this area down here of the shirt or the area in the back, and I can't really see what's happening back here. So let's do a little temporary thing so we can see this a little bit better. And we'll do that with an adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, and levels. I'll just clip this to that one layer. There we are. And using the middle control here, let's just lighten the picture up so I can really see what's going on back here. That's about as far as it goes. As you can see down here, it just goes pure black there so there's nothing really there to work with but I can bring it up enough so I can begin to see where the back kind of comes it'll be right down here somewhere okay back to our layers come down to the layer with the girl on it now normally when I'm making a selection I like using the pen tool making a path making path adjustments and so forth this time it's not important because we'll be doing our selection mostly with the refined edge technique so I'll just change my tool here to the polygonal lasso tool to just fast and easy and let's zoom in a couple of shots just like that and with the polygonal lasso tool I'll start right down here the back is kind of here you can kind of see it so I'll start just off the screen right down there and I'll just kind of knock in where the back should be here and when I get up here to this neck area I'll just kind of come along this. This isn't that critical in this picture. So this is a real nice fast tool. And when you're using this particular tool, you click for points and then Photoshop combines those, puts lines between your points. Make sure you don't click too quickly or it's going to collapse your selection and have to start over again. That's the only real thing to watch out for. I'll come right there to that corner where the shirt meets the back of the neck. Now from this point, just come out a little ways, out up just you don't, you don't want to overlap, so up just a little bit and then out. Hold the space bar down, we can move the picture like this, and then very quickly I'll just make this a nice selection right around the girl's hair here, and little space bar right there. And we'll continue this clear around and then use that refined edge to make the actual selection. Okay, we'll come down to here. We need to be a little bit careful. I want to come in right between the nose and the rose. And I want to leave space so I can come back through there a second time. And we'll see what that's all about here in just a second. Now we're back down here to the shirt again. And it's black on black. The refine edge is just not going to get that for us. So I'll come right back into the corner again. And let's do this a little bit more carefully in here, following the edge. Luckily on this with the black background and the black shirt, if you're a little bit off here and no one's ever going to see it, it'll just look like it's part of the shirt. 
Okay, just come back around. There we go. And follow this on down. And then just off screen, right down there, just off the picture. Let's drag over. Again, staying just outside and back in. And again, now we're going to be working with the part that will be using the refined edge on. I'm just going to lose that one leaf right there. And let's just work our way around. The reason I'm losing that one leaf is it actually is pretty dark in there. It's going to be missed by the refined edge anyway. So I'll just lose it right now. Now here is where we needed to stay kind of close to the nose. So I have space in here to come in and around the rose. All right, let's just finish this off. Again, stay just a little ways away and come clear around and then back off again just like that. Now this time come down below this line. You don't want to cross over. Come below this line straight across. Hold the space bar down, pull it back over again and right back to your starting point. It's that little circle that shows up right there. That means you're on the starting point. Click there. That then finishes off that selection. Okay, let's go ahead and fit on screen. There we are. Let's now use the Refine Edge tool. I can hide our adjustment layer that's no longer needed. And let's go up to Select and Select and Mask. Right now I'm in Photoshop 2017, CC 2017. And in this new version here of Photoshop, it's called Select and Mask. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, like Photoshop CS6 or CS5, it's going to say Refine Edge. It's basically the same thing. The look of the tool is just a little bit different, but it's basically the same tool. Okay, I'll click on that. There we go. I am using the overlay view here, which is the one that I always use. And I'll leave all of these settings at their default settings. And then we'll simply come in here. You can see how we have the tool right there. And you put the plus sign outside of what you want to keep, overlapping the area that we have in there. And then the Refine Edge tool is going to find that edge and make a real nice clean selection for us. Now the new version of this in 2017 kind of refigures the whole mask the whole time you're doing this. It's an interesting adjustment of how this tool works. So as you go around you'll be seeing little changes in the mask you know, all over the place as you're working on the mask. Before it would just kind of fix just what you're right next to you. Now it kind of readjusts, refigures the whole thing. You see a little stuff like this? Don't worry about that. We'll take care of that in just a second. Now if your selected area up there is too large, just come back with a second pass just right over it like that and that should clean that out. Again, don't worry about those little bit of darkish areas that are appearing outside. They may go away as you continue to work. You'll see here it's figuring it out and it's even making changes down here. You can see how that stuff is changing a little bit as we work around. It actually does a real nice job. This latest version of this tool is a real nice tool. It does a great job at finding those edges. I'll take it right down here, just right down to the shirt. That's all been done. Okay, let's now come in and we'll just go around the rows here. It's a little bit slower than it used to work because it's refiguring the whole edge each time you do this instead of just the part you're working on. So I'll tend to do a little bit, wait for a second, let it go ahead and do its figuring and then come right back in on it again. Of course, the faster your computer, the faster that's going to happen. I'm just using just an average computer right now. I like to keep things real typical for these videos, not using anything really outlandishly fast so, or it would look kind of unbelievable on what I was doing. So it's a standard computer and standard speeds. Let's go ahead and finish off. We're just about done now with this. Right down to there, and that should take care of the basic settings in here. Now there's a little bit of this kind of stuff showing out around here, just a few little spots, a little bit of kind of smudginess, you know, right down here, right over in here. We can clean that up. Okay, on contrast, just bring the contrast up. As you bring this up, it's going to increase the contrast and that will be getting rid of that smudginess. So bring it way up to maybe about a third of the way up in here and that just about cleans all that out. Looks real nice and clean now. So there we go. There's our basic selection. Maybe a little bit right there. A little touch on that spot. And that looks good. Okay. Choose OK. 
and this will give us our basic selection. Now I could have worked on a feathering right here, but I don't want to do that. We'll be doing that as a later step. And there's the selection. Just click on the layer mask button. At this point, this is a hard edge layer mask. Let's now soften that down just a little bit, give it just a real slight gradient. So we're on the layer mask side, notice there's the outline. Go up to filter, come down to blur and Gaussian blur. And I'm going to be giving this a blur of just one pixel. It just feathers the edge just ever so slightly and that will help to get rid of that real hard edge and help blend the picture in just a bit. There we go. Okay, so there is the first of our gradient masks. Real, real slight one pixel gradient on that. Let's now come down to the background layer and we'll do a larger gradient on this to give us that vignette effect in here. So I'm on this layer. Let's change the tool up here to the lasso tool, just a regular lasso tool. And I'll start just off the picture right down there and come around the rows and then up around the head like this and around the back and then straight across the bottom back to our beginning point, giving us just a nice little simple selection. Let's turn this into a layer mask. Click on the layer mask button again and here's our layer mask. Now the background's white. I want to change the background to black. So let's come down to our background layer. We have black as our foreground color. That's fine. Let's change this tool back to the paint bucket tool. Click inside here and it gives us a nice black background. Okay, we want to now blend this edge by using a gradient mask on this. Changing that to a gradient and that's up on this mask. Look for that outline of course. Make sure that you see the outline around the layer mask and not the picture. And then go back up to filter, come down to blur, and then down to Gaussian blur. There's our one pixel. I'm going to back up just a bit here so you can see the actual layer mask. There's the edge. Now if I begin pulling this over here to the right, it's going to soften up that edge. And the more I soften that edge, the more it's going to begin to blur that background. Now one thing about the blur, notice that it blurs out and in. So right in the middle of that is the actual edge. It's blurring towards the outside and towards the inside. It's not blurring away, it's blurring both directions. Now it's important to keep that in mind because as I pull the blur up, it's be, going to be taking this gradient and moving in towards the center as well. And at some point you would lose your center. If I pull this way up here, you can see how the right there the center begins going dark. We've taken it so far that we actually lose the white part in the center of that mask. We don't want to go quite that far. I still want to have some whiteness in here, some full value. But I want it real soft, real nice gradient on that one. And the number that I actually used in my demo was 189. So it's real soft. It's just a little bit of white left in here. And then a real soft gradient on that layer mask, giving us that nice kind of vignette effect in there on the background. Choose OK. So there's a real soft edge gradient. Now I want to bring the girl in a bit better to the background and there are two things about that. I want to bring her colors in a bit closer to the background and I want to bring the quality of the background closer to her. She's very very sharp, very very contrasty actually. So let's start off with that one. We're down here on the background layer still. Go up to layer and come down to new adjustment layer and levels and let's clip this right there. Clip this to that one layer, choose OK. There's our levels. Now by pulling the left side in I can increase the darks. That increases the contrast on the dark end. And somewhere around in here looks pretty good. Right? You know, high 30s, mid 40s in there somewhere, maybe as high as 50. Just brings in some contrast again. And then I can bring down the values just a little bit up here by pulling the gray midtones towards the right. If I go real far, see that if we go to the right, it darkens it down. If I go to the left, it lightens it up. I want it just a little bit darker than normal. Normal is 1, so just a little bit beyond that, maybe about 95 or 93, kind of like that. So it just darkens the background down a bit. We've increased the contrast a little bit, maybe a little less contrasty. Maybe about 36 looks pretty good. And by doing that, the quality of that background is more in line with the quality 
of the foreground value. There's some real nice contrast in here in the rows, for instance. So by increasing the blacks, we've increased the dark and contrast, and that helps to bring the values closer together and just a real slight darkening down. I left the whites alone on this one. If you want to, you can brighten the whites up, but I like it just a little bit darker in the background so that she really pops out in the foreground, making just kind of a background vignette. Okay, so that takes care of that one. So we've fixed the background layer. Real nice soft gradient mask in there. Let's now bring her colors closer together in here. Now there's a lot of green in the background. It's a real green picture. So we can bring some green in here. And we'll do that with a photo filter. So layer, adjustment layer. Come down to photo filter. Again, I'm clipping this to that one layer. That's very important. You don't want this changing the colors of the background at all. And the one that I like down here was underwater, which actually is kind of a green value. There's a green value. It's still a bit too too thin, so I'm just going to increase our density on the photo filter, darkens things down, and makes it even greener. And get up here somewhere about 63% or so. And at this point, the values in here in the back of our head seem to begin to blend in with the values of the colors in there. So we've kind of mashed our green sense in here. So it looks like she's part of that environment a little bit better. Of course, the face is no good. I don't like that, but we'll fix that in just a second. So we've, we're kind of bringing our colors closer together with this photo filter. Again, I use 63% on the density quite a lot. Now to help to blend this in and bring her face back, again, we're on our layer mask side over here. We have black as a foreground color. Go up to the paintbrush, and you can see there's the size of my paintbrush right there. It's actually at 243 pixels, soft edge brush, 100% soft edge. There's a hardness at zero, size 243. And I'm just going to paint black onto the layer mask. Just right over the face, a little bit into the hair up here. Maybe just a touch into the ear right there, and of course get the rose as well. Just that. Now, because it's a soft edge brush, there is a very slight gradient on that layer mask, but it's still kind of a hard, hardish edge in here. We can tone down the hardness of that edge just by blurring this out just a little bit. Same trick as before. Go up to Filter, come down to Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And I'll pull it way down to zero again. And by pulling it up, we can soften down the edge right in here. And the one that I used actually was up around 35. I'll just type that in. 35, there we go. Now if I preview this, take it off and put it on. If you watch right in here, there's with it off. And you can really kind of see the edge of where that brush was right in there by just using a little bit of a Gaussian blur, we can soften down the edge and that now blends nicely right into the hair and there's no edge apparent. Choose OK. So there we go, kind of a medium edge gradient mask. So we have three gradient masks being used now. We have the gradient mask on the girl herself, which is just a one pixel, real small on the edge. We have kind of a medium one right up here, 35 pixel softness on that edge plus, of course, the softness from the brush. It's a little bit more than the 35, actually. And then down here, real large softness gives us that nice, soft blend off in the background. So there you go. Using those gradient masks, you know, gradients on the layer mask to help blend in these different areas. Now you can see the masks directly. If you hold the Alt key down and click on the layer mask, it brings up just that layer mask. So there's the gradient mask right there, real soft gradient. A little bit of, of pure white in here, pure black out here, and then real soft. There is the girl. This very, 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 very subtle softness on that is real quick gradient. And then here is the one for that underwater filter. Nice little soft gradient, again, helping to blend that in with the area underneath. So there we go. There is our finish. And again, using quite a bit of use of the gradient mask on the layer mask in here to help blend all this stuff together. So there it is, Photoshop gradient mask giving us this nice background vignette on this portrait.
Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.